Space junk particles detected in Earth's atmosphere. Space junk is the debris left behind from spent rocket stages and defunct satellites. Find out why a new discovery of space junk particles in the stratosphere has implications for our environment and climate. We humans have transformed our attitudes about junk over the course of my lifetime. I can remember the kids on the street where I grew up comparing and feeling quite competitive about how much trash our family set out on the curb. Trucks rolled around every week and hauled anything we set on the boulevard off to the dump on the edge of town. The guy who looked after the dump either burned or buried it and nobody gave it any more thought. Today we recognize that waste management is a much bigger issue than we'd realized half a century ago. Concerns about pollution, habitat destruction, sanitation, public health, and climate change have led to regulations and policies that tell us all how to go about getting rid of our junk sustainably. Ever since humanity began launching objects into space back in 1957, we've also been leaving space junk behind, like spent rocket stages and discarded equipment. For example, the Apollo moon landings had to discard over 95% of their rocket's launch mass in order to escape from Earth's gravity. Over time, space agencies started to recognize that old space junk causes problems for later missions. A new field arose called Space Debris Mitigation to reduce the amount of trash spacecraft leave behind and to try to find ways to safely remove defunct satellites from orbit. Dr. Daniel Murphy has been studying aerosol properties and processes in our atmosphere for the past two decades. He's a research chemist at the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association, NOAA. Professor Murphy is the lead author of a study that the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences published last week. The findings raise another aspect of the space junk issue. The researchers have found traces of metals from satellites and rocket boosters in the atmosphere, more than seven miles above the Earth's surface. When space junk re-enters the atmosphere, it gets vaporized by the intense heat. Meteors have always entered our atmosphere, and they leave space dust behind in the upper atmosphere. It now appears that as space junk burns up on re-entry, it leaves particles of rare metals within that layer of space dust. The findings are part of a NOAA Chemical Science Laboratory mission called Stratospheric Aerosol Processes, Budget, and Radiative Effects, or SABER for short, the team flew a high-altitude research plane over the Arctic to investigate aerosol particles in the stratosphere. The stratosphere contains the ozone layer, and it also moderates Earth's climate. The scientists custom-built a highly sensitive instrument called the Particle Analysis by Laser Mass Spectrometer, POMS, and mounted it in the nose of one of NASA's WB-57 research aircraft with a large forward-facing air intake. The POMS instrument gathered and analyzed the mass spectrum of over 500,000 individual aerosol particles during the flight. About 10% of those particles contained aluminum and exotic metals that appear to be traces of space junk. Two of the most surprising elements we saw in these particles were niobium and hafnium, Professor Murphy explained. These are both rare elements that are not expected in the stratosphere. It was a mystery as to where these metals are coming from and how they're ending up there, Professor Murphy said. Nobium and hafnium don't exist in nature as free elements. Chemical processing facilities extract these elements from mineral ores. These rare metals play a key role in semiconductors and superalloys. Along with these rare elements, the scientists also found copper, lithium, and aluminum at levels far beyond the normal range for space dust. The combination of aluminum and copper plus niobium and hafnium, which are used in heat-resistant high-performance alloys, pointed us to the aerospace industry, Professor Murphy said. Now that they know that space junk particles exist in the stratosphere, the scientists want to determine how they interact with other aerosols. 
Space agencies expect to see huge increases in space traffic over the next couple of decades and potentially more collisions, creating even more space junk. For example, the Starlink network has over 4,500 satellites in orbit and plans to have up to 42,000 of them over the next few years. So it's important to understand the effect this increased traffic could have on the ozone layer. The researchers project that the percentage of stratospheric particles with space junk traces could rise from 10% to 50% or more because of all this increased traffic. Satellite operators are planning to have more satellites burn up in the atmosphere to avoid future collisions, but based on these new findings, that will also raise the volume of rare metals in our atmosphere. Meanwhile, some companies have proposed seeding the stratosphere with sulfur aerosols to reduce climate change. Professor Murphy and his team want to assess how the space junk traces might affect those plans as well. It seems that no matter what we do or where we go, we humans leave behind traces of our activities. Yet, we don't seem to be very good at anticipating the negative effects those traces might have on our natural world. Finding out more about our atmosphere's chemistry and how space junk might affect it helps piece together the new story humanity needs to make sense of nature and our place within it. We're learning to apply science not merely to exploit natural resources, but instead to understand how to live sustainably with them. According to the website Orbiting Now, there are now about 8,697 artificial satellites in orbit, of which 7,892 will be burning up on re-entry someday. There will be a lot of work to understand the implications of these novel metals in the stratosphere, Professor Murphy concluded. We always have more to learn, if we dare to know.